Hi everybody, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Kayla and this is Five Canadian Acres, where my family of five and I are living on five acres in Alberta, Canada. Today, I want to take you on a little garden tour. This will be my second garden tour. I will link my first one down below. I wanted to do it about four weeks, but it's been about five and a half weeks since my last one. We just got really busy with holidays and then we've had so much rain this year. I know a lot of you guys have had a cold, wet spring just like me. I'll show you what's going on in my garden there's a lot of failures things just don't want to grow in this cold wet rain but there's a lot of things that are doing really well so let's go and see this was that last bed I had filled in my previous video and we've got a few things growing here we have a scarlet runner bean nothing's coming on yet hopefully soon and then in the back there are a red long noodle bean hoping to have those grow all up the trellis and then these are all my cherry tomatoes. I did do one pruning, but they're going to need a second pruning. And then in the front here, these are all a yellow banana pepper. As you can see, they are putting on lots of flowers and we should hopefully start having some peppers grow soon. I've got some marigolds tucked in there, petunias. These, this is a zinnia. I started that one from seed, very pretty. And then all down the front here, we have celery growing nice and tall. And then tucked in on the edge down here, we have some sage. This bed is where I had hardened off a lot of my plants. I just have a few flowers left, a few tomatoes there that never got in the ground, but I'm just gonna grow them in those pots and see what we get. And then a strawberry plant here. Now here we have some radishes that have gone to seed. So you can see they'll put off flowers and then they're gonna grow a seed pod, which are edible. So I'm leaving them to try that and see if we like the radish seed pods. My chives have all gone flowered and putting off seed now. So once these have all dried up nicely, I can collect those seeds for some chive seeds. These are all a golden wonder, California wonder pepper. Now, as you can see, I have not mulched this yet. And this is what happens if you don't mulch your plants. You can see all of that dirt. We had a heavy, heavy rain yesterday and all of that dirt splashes up on the leaves and that can cause soil borne diseases. So not ideal here. I need to put some mulch in there. And then we have some marigolds yet to flower. I have a little bit of a sweet chocolate pepper here. Again, they're not doing good. Peppers really like it hot and we just have not had the heat. This is all my spinach that's gone to seed. I'm gonna be collecting a bunch of spinach seeds from it. It's actually kind of beautiful. And on the back here, we have a bunch of snap peas. These are a sugar snap pea and we have been eating off these. They will get nice and plump and big, but you can just eat the whole thing like that. So good. And then on this side, these are a snow pea, so they will not get fat. They stay skinny like that, and they're really good for stir fried. We've been harvesting lots off of that one as well. And this is only, I think, six plants. And on the back there, I think there's eight or ten. So just a few plants, you can get quite a bit. Lettuce here is going crazy. It's loving the wet, cool weather. And we've been eating a lot of lettuce. These ones here, as you can see, it's got a nice head forming on it. This actually, this, this lettuce, this red one is really good. Even the kids really like that. So I'm going to grow more of that. And we just have some flowers. I made up this planter. This is the uh, holy basil. It's not super happy, but it's growing. In the corner here, we have our two cucumbers that have grown quite a bit. And they're just starting to put on some nice flowers. Again, see all that splash back from the rain? I need to mulch in here too. These are all my jalapenos. I am starting to get some peppers growing here. Not very many, but we'll get some. I definitely wanted a lot of jalapenos this year. I don't know if I'll get them, but we'll get a few. And then I have here are my poblano peppers. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think they're gonna do much this year, but we'll just let them grow. I did do some interplanting with some lettuces here and they are starting to come up. I did some over here as well in the peppers. So we're starting to get some lettuces come up there. Here are my flowers. Okay, uh, tip, make sure you have drainage holes in your pots. These do not have drainage holes. And as you can see, they just fill up with water. 
which most plants do not like wet feet. I bought these flowers. They're so pretty. They're a dahlia. I'm new to the whole flower scene. Now here are some beans that I planted in my last video. They had just started to come up. They shot up. They're doing really good. Now my uh, carrots in between, they're all laying down because of that rain. But what you can do is you can just kind of go like this. Try to get them to perk back up because they're just stuck to the ground. They'll pop back up with this sun. And then in the middle here, I also have some spinach. A second planting of spinach. So we'll be able to eat some more of that. Beans are looking good. Over here, I weed it and it just turns into a jungle. This rain, the weeds love the rain. So I've just left it. I kind of weed whacked in here so I can get to my herbs, but you can see like these thistles just grow right through all that stuff. So I have to thin out these two. These ones aren't so bad. <laughs> Here's what's left of my catnip. The cat has found it, which is kind of what it's for. It is flowering as well, but that's his little garden treat. And everything's just kind of struggling along up here. Down below here, we've got the peppers up front, which aren't doing anything. Like this guy actually died, pretty sure. But I just like to leave things to be sure. I planted another guy there, but nothing is really growing in there. The potatoes in the boxes are doing pretty good. My cherry tree is very happy. It's put a lot of growth on. This is my rose bush that I haven't planted yet, but it has been blooming and it's very beautiful. In this little bed here I have, these are a green onion. Again, it's gone to seed, I'm leaving it. And these little pieces here are actually where the seed forms little black seeds in all of those heads. So I'll be letting those dry and collecting those. And I've got just some random peppers in here, which got mislabeled. I don't know what they are. This is a summer squash, which is growing. And then just some self-seeded calendula, which is going to be flowering soon. Over here, we have my grapes. They're doing really good. As you can see, we're getting grapes. These are a purple grape. And then I had this other grape plant, which I always think is dead. But I mean, <laughs> every year it grows a little bit down here. So I'm just gonna leave it. It'll come back. This is a white grape. Maybe I'll mulch it a bit better this winter and see what we can get. Here's my asparagus over here. It's all grown up, going to put some seeds off. And then Amongst this jungle, which needs to be weeded again, there are some peas which I planted back there. You can see the white pea flowers. Just harvest off those what I can get. And on this side are all my blueberries. As you can see, I found a couple on sale clearance. Two more I'm going to add, so this is going to be a whole big thing of blueberries. This is my actual plant there, and it's got a few blueberries on it. So we'll get a few from there this year. So my strawberries have done really good. I have to finish weeding this end. I did plant right here some fennel, but other than that, it's all my nice strawberries and weeds. <laughs> my asparagus is coming up nice, but I just planted these strawberries what, a couple months ago, and you can see they're already putting off runners. So this is a runner. It grows from the mother plant, touches down. It's gonna throw off some roots. Right there, as you can see, it's rooted in. I just pulled it up. It's okay. It'll be all right. And then that's just going to turn into a new strawberry plant. So that's how it went from looking like this to looking like that in one year. But we're getting a ton of strawberries. We've just been picking handfuls and pretty soon I'm going to have enough for a basket to make some jam. And those are my big large asparagus. The reason I leave the asparagus like that is because it's going to put more nutrients. It's going to put all that energy down into the roots so that next year it's going to be able to come back nice and strong. So these over here are my jungle of tomatoes and they definitely need a good pruning, which we'll be doing shortly here, but they are starting to put on some nice flowers. I haven't seen any fruit forming yet. The rain doesn't do very well for the pollinators either 
because they don't come out in the rain. So hopefully that will clear up shortly. Got a little bit of parsley, some parsley here on the front side. And I did interplant something. Oh my gosh, look at that. I do have a tomato. See, there it is, yay. Okay, we've got some tomatoes going guys. I definitely have to get in here and prune this. And these are my other tomatoes. I planted these really close together on purpose, knowing I was gonna prune them. So I just have to get out here and do it. And we have tied them up to these strings, but you can see this one's come off. So I'm gonna have to retie that and get them all cleaned up. Now over here, I have beans. These are a bush bean. I have purple, green, and yellow, I believe. No, I'm sorry, purple yellow and a dragon tongue but as you can see sometimes the bush beans just grow really tall too they just want to grow like a vine so if you do have support you can support them my oregano is looking really good back here i also interplanted some kale in here but because it's so bushy there's not much there there's a little bit right here and then this stuff actually out front is doing really good not the thistle and here's the horseradish I planted this spring and it's looking really good. So nice big leaves there. And over here. So here we have more tomatoes. Again, I did a pruning on them, but they're going to need just another light pruning. And then we have our carrots in front, which are starting to grow on. We've, we've thinned them a little bit, but uh, still nothing big yet and then onions along the front. More tomatoes back here that are just a little unruly and we've attached them with the strings to there. But this guy's just fallen over. See how much he's fallen over? So I'm gonna have to tie him back up. Got a few marigolds coming there. Now this is the okra I planted. It's not doing so good. This is my first year growing okra. But actually, if you look there, there's a little itty bitty baby okra coming on so tiny little plants I don't think they're usually you want a plant to be more mature before it starts producing fruit but with this year we've had I'm just happy to get anything um, I have a bit of Swiss chard in here coming up this is some sweet basil onions this is the lettuce that I let go to seed as you can see it's gotten so tall it's just fallen over but again it's they're really pretty when they go to seed they just, the symmetry of them. And we'll be collecting those seeds for next year. Here are some little baby carrots that I had planted and I did not get very good germination. As you can see, there should be a whole row here. But we'll take what we can get. More marigolds. Now, as you can see, this tomato plant's fallen way over. All of that wind just blew it all down. But I do have peppers here as well. So I'm gonna to have to lift that up because these are my habanero peppers. But they're just not happy, like little babies. I won't get much for the hot peppers this year, but that's okay. Like I said, every year, if it were a hot, hot, hot summer, all my cool weather crops wouldn't be doing so good. So it's just kind of like a trade-off. Here's where I planted some potatoes in these big pots as well as I put some cilantro in this. Now this cilantro bolts really quickly and goes to seed, but it will actually produce coriander seeds. So I'll let this go to seed and then we'll be able to collect some coriander. And then in this bucket here is my ground cherries. As you can see, they're starting to form. They will not be ready until they actually fall off mostly to the ground or they come off really easily. The husks will dry out and then they'll drop and you can eat them. Over here, my tulips there, spent for the year. This garden, my daughter needs to come in and weed it. I'm making her do it, so she's got a few things to do. But we do have the yarrow in the back there. And this is beautiful borage, which is coming on really nicely. This one's already starting to flower. And the chervil's looking really good. And these here are poppies. So they're coming up here and hopefully we'll get some flowers on. Over here, this is my lavender. And as you can see, it's starting to flower. This has the most beautiful smell. 
And then my rosemary died. It likes it hot and dry and this rain has just killed it all. Nasturtiums are looking really nice. A couple of pansies looking good. My flowers are not looking happy. They've gotten quite beat up with this rain. So I'm gonna have to go in and trim, clean them up and uh, I think it's called deadheading them. And we'll see if we can get some more. Down here we need to do a lot more weeding still, but I've got, these are lemon cucumber coming on. And at the back there, these are all my cucamelons. No flowers yet, but they're growing nice and strong. And then over amongst those weeds, I have one little Armenian cucumber. And all this stuff is here because I had planned to plant some more of those things. But with the year we've had, it just has not happened. So we'll see what I can still get in the ground. We're at the beginning of July here. So I still have another good couple of months of growing. So a lot of stuff, this stuff can still take off. I'll also have a video coming up about planning your fall garden. So there is still lots of time to grow, lots of time for this stuff to grow. We'll just have to see what happens. Over here, I have some celery ac. So it's like celery, but it's just gonna grow into a big root that you eat. And these things at the back are hibiscus. And I don't see any flowers on them yet. Over here, this is my calendula. And as you can see, it's going to start to flower soon. This is another edible plant flower. And then on the back here, I have some sunflowers. Which have yet to bloom, but they will shortly. Now over here are my potatoes, my jungle of potatoes. They are looking really good. I am a little bit worried with all of that rain that they're going to be kind of like rotten in the ground we do have decent drainage over here so hopefully they will be good they are starting to flower so usually once they start to flower up about two weeks later you're able to start harvesting and then once the plants really die back is when you can really do your harvest so in about two more weeks we'll probably start digging these up and seeing what we have now over on this side, we have our lake. <laughs> um, funny story is you can see the garlic at the back has done really nice, but I had planted garlic up here all winter. And now I realize, so sometimes all of this rain is actually a good thing because you can see how wet it is in this corner. So what happened is all the garlic I planted here probably just rotted because all the snow from the winter just melted all right here. So. It's a good thing kind of this happened because now you can see all your wet spots. You can see it, it's come all the way up here. Thankfully, I have a nice row here, a little bit higher, so things aren't getting flooded. I'm not sure how these onions are gonna last with all this rain. We'll see what we can get. In this row here, my cabbages are doing awesome. You can see we have a nice big head there forming. They're not gonna get super huge like those ginormous ones. These are called the tiara cabbage but we've harvested a few and they were really good. Here I have some kohlrabi. It's starting to form a nice little head here. This is just all gonna get nice and big. Purple cabbages, onions in between. And here's the garlic I wanted to show you. So these are a hard neck garlic. So you can see this piece coming out the top. This is what's called a garlic scape. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut these off. Once they start to do their first curl, so you can see over here, it's kind of starting to curl. So once it does that curl, I'm gonna cut it off there. I'm, you can use the garlic scapes. You can make pestos and recipes with it, very garlicky flavor. And then what's gonna happen is the bottoms will die, start to die back, then I can harvest it. So we're probably maybe about another month off to harvest our garlic. Then we have this row here. This is a different type of cabbage. This is called a Copenhagen market cabbage. So they're gonna be a bit bigger than those tiaras and they're starting to form up nicely. If you notice I don't have any covers here, I had covered them this spring, but the cat wrecked it and it was quite a kerfuffle. So I just tore it all up. Because of our cold, wet spring, I haven't seen a lot of cabbage moths. So we've really lucked out this year with me not having these covered and them not being decimated by bugs. But in this row here, we have some cauliflower some kale we just harvested. I just harvested some of this yesterday. I just cut off the outside leaves and I just make kale chips. And then we have some broccoli coming. Here's a really nice one. So nice big broccoli starting to come on. So we'll be able to harvest that soon. Over on this side. 
Now this one looks like it's starting to go to seed. You see how these buds are starting to loosen up? They're actually going to open into flowers. Now the difference is, is when you see broccoli like this in the store and it looks like this, you're like, ooh, that's yucky. Homegrown broccoli from the garden, even when it goes to flower and seed, even when it goes like this, starting to flower, it's still really tender. So it's still very edible. These are a cauliflower I had bought on clearance as well. And they haven't formed any heads yet. And then I do have on the outside here is a little bit of dill. Now we finally got this bed filled and I planted some of my leftover tomatoes in there. They're struggling. They were in the pots way too long. And now I'm looking here and it looks like we have some potatoes. So this is the bed I planted potatoes in last year, Ruth Stout method. It was a total failure. I got zero potatoes, but we must've missed picking one. Even we rototilled it. And as you can see, that's potatoes coming up. So, well, I'm just gonna leave it. You're not supposed to grow potatoes and tomatoes together, but that's okay. You're not supposed to do a lot of things that we do. And down here, I planted some more bush beans. So there's just two different types of green bush beans. We really like our green beans. And in this row, I have not done anything yet here. I'm thinking I might put my Brussels sprouts in there for my fall garden. Stay tuned. Now over here, we have some peas. These are a shelling pea. So strangely enough, they like got super, super tall before they started to flower. The peas I have growing over here, they're flowering already and they're only a foot and a half tall. So you definitely want to know what you're growing because they're so, even with monk's peas, there's just such a different growing style. And then all along the bottom there, I have carrots. And in this row as well, a bunch of carrots. I have thinned some, but, um, the ones that we have in thin that are just going to be tops, we'll just feed to the bunnies. And these are my beets and they're actually looking really good. I have to thin them. They're very close together. So if I come in here, ouch, thistle, and I thin them up good, we'll be able to get a few harvests of beets. In the next row, you can see all the way down the middle here. This is rutabaga. Over in Europe or England or whatnot, I believe they call it Swede. But we really like that. It's a good fall vegetable. And then I've got just some nasturtiums my daughter planted that stayed. Nice nasturtiums coming up. And actually this here is just a random zinnia. So. And then on the outside is that other row of peas. And they're starting to come on good. As you can see, we're getting some nice peas here. Now with peas, the more you pick them, the more they'll produce. So sometimes even though these are a snap pea, I'll come and pick them like this and just eat them so that they'll produce more. Last time I showed this bed, I don't think much had actually even sprouted yet. These are all my cucumbers. As you can see, they're started to grow up really nice here. And I don't really see much for flowers yet. Hopefully soon again, cucumbers, they like the water, but they need the heat too. So we have these strings up here to try to attach them to. I just don't know if they're even gonna make it. We've got cucumbers all in these four rows. Now, you can see I've got just little guys coming up because what I've done is I've gone and reseeded everywhere that nothing really came up. I just went and planted some more seeds. So it'll be a little bit of a succession So, And then here, this is all dill. Just threw a bunch of dill seed down. It's kind of cool. This is actually the seeds I saved from last year. It's always fun when you plant your own seeds. And then all on this side are just some onion sets that I had bought. And I just threw them in the ground. So we'll get some nice onions here for cooking and such. And then in the next row is all my summer squash. Got some patty pans, some yellow, and some more yellow, I think. There it is. Get them there. Little baby zucchini. I love this yellow zucchini is so good. You pick it when it's small, fry it in a pan with a little bit of butter, garlic if you like that and so delicious. And then over here we have, this is a sugar squash pumpkin and we're starting to get some flowers. So if you see, this is a male flower. It's got a long stem, oops, and then the flower and the female flowers are what actually produces the fruit. This is my Howden pumpkin. I grew these last year. They grew really well. Go over here. You can see 
we have a little pumpkin. These are just gonna grow up nice and long. I'm gonna get some pallets here and put them out here so they can grow out the fence like that. This is a uh, watermelon, not doing good at all. I don't think it's grown in a month. No, just not enough sunshine. And down here, this is a Minnesota midget cantaloupe. I did replant one. Again, it's not growing very much. These are called a hope melon. They're actually doing really good. I replanted from seed and they're coming on nice. They're actually, I got them from a, a place called Salt Spring Island Seeds. It's on Salt Spring Island off the coast of BC. This melon actually was developed out of, um, by Prince George BC, which is a Northern place. It's about the same latitude as we are up here. So it's developed for the North. So this is why I think it's doing really good. Hopefully we'll get a bit of fruit off there cause I think it only takes 60 days. And then on the end here are some more pumpkins. Now, as you can see here, I'm like, I was about like, what is eating my pumpkin? But it's nothing's eating it. It's just actually the male flowers that fall off. So there's no worries there, but you can see it's starting to grow way out there. So I'm gonna have to get these pallets set up. And then from here, we did add this one little section out front for our, what we call the three sisters. So that is corn, squash, and beans. And it's just a mess out here. I see I got my big boots on. <laughs> but these, so this is actually, they're looking really good. I've heard a lot of mixed reviews about the three sisters method. And I can tell you my opinion on it now a little bit. So I started these corn ahead of time and they're actually, I transplanted them carefully. You're, they don't like it so much, but it works. And then I planted the beans. So you can see, here's the corn, here's the beans. They're gonna start to grow up. And then the squash here is just growing all up the bottom. There's a nice bean plant. So those corn are nice and tall and these beans can grow up over them. And if we go down here, I planted these ones after and I planted the beans and the corn at the same time. Now, as you can see, they're the same height. So it's gonna be really hard for this bean to climb up this corn. So for those of you that wanna do it in the future, I highly recommend either pre-starting your corn or planting your corn first, letting it grow, and then you can um, plant your beans after. And then I started all of these squash from seed and they're doing really good. These are a sugar pie pumpkin. We wanna have lots of pumpkin. And then we also have a, I can't remember now. What did I plant here? Oh yeah, a burpless butterbush, like a butternut style. And then these are an acorn squash. And those ones I had transplanted. So it's kind of a neat experiment that so I've heard this a lot, that a lot of times things that you direct seed will catch up with what was transplanted. Um, they're not, flowering at all yet. These ones are starting to flower. So we're gonna count and see what we get off of each. There's the garden tour. Again, it's the beginning of July. It's July 8th today. It's been about five and a half weeks since the last one. We still have, like I said, we still have another two, two and a half months of growing and hopefully we'll finally start to get some heat. It's actually really hot out right now today because we have all that moisture in the ground. Now the sun comes out. This is ideal conditions for all of these plants to just take off and grow. Can't wait to see you on the next one. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.